This week on The Wire, the good and the bad from the Banking Royal Commission, experts tip an RBA rate cut, and Westpac boss rejects blame. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth and welcome to The Wire where you can get all the important stories happening in, from the week in real estate for February the 7th of February. So let's get stuck straight into our stories. Now actually, before we do that, if it's your first time tuning in here, make sure you notif uh, click to see our notifications first on Facebook so you get notified when we do these videos. If you're a long time follower, follower welcome back. We love having you guys be a part of these uh, these live broadcasts. And of course, we love to see your interaction with these videos. So please like, love, angry, make comments, ask questions, let us know how you're feeling. And the only thing that we ask in return for sharing this valuable information with you is you share, share, share. Share it with all your friends and family and your social media channels and your timeline. Let's get stuck into those stories, right? So let's firstly break down the good and the bad from the ranking Banking Royal Commission. There's been a whole lot of fanfare and, uh, you know, I guess um, drama around this Banking Royal Commission over the past. Uh, let's call it 12 months. The final recommendations came out on Monday. What does it really mean? Well, look, guys, pretty much what it comes down to is overall the recommendations from Commissioner Hayne uh, will benefit consumers. The benefits, probably pretty marginal. Not much that you're really going to notice. So let's run through where you will see it. So firstly, superannuation. So the average, superannua uh, the average Australian has four superannuation funds. Typically what happens is most employees will leave it up to their employer when they start their employment and their employer will set up a fund for them, meaning that people have multiple accounts. So one of the recommendations that Commissioner Haynes suggested is that people should be stapled to a default fund, meaning that uh, when you move from workplace to workplace, your superannuation fund is will go with you. Okay, So this is gonna be a lot easier for people. Less superannuation funds means less fees, means better for you guys in your pocket. So that's a, that, that is a good recommendation. Um, probably marginal benefit from it though. Insurance, in terms of the duty of disclosure, so currently under the, the way that insurance is happening, say you forget to mention something when you're lodging your insurance or taking out a, a um, insurance policy, a lot of the time these insurance companies, if you fail to declare stuff, they can use your duty of disclosure as a way of getting around paying out. Okay, that's not good for consumers. So what Commissioner Hayne has made a recommendation that rather than a duty of disclosure, it be changed to people having to take reasonable care that they not make a misrepresentation. So I think that will definitely benefit consumers. Once again, fairly marginally, but another good recommendation that was made. Uh, and then finally, probably the other good thing that will benefit consumers as well is also when it comes to misconduct. So say for example, g'day Josh, welcome to the Facebook Live, mate. Um, say for example, uh, if a bank, uh, say a bank has been involved in misconduct and it's cost you money, you've taken them to regulators, ombudsmen, things like that, and it's found in your favor and they need to pay you. In the case where they don't pay you, so probably this would only happen where a financial institution or um, a company has then gone broke. What will happen is there'll actually be a, uh, res uh, a scheme of last resort is what they're referring to it, which will be funded by the financial industries, which means the government will then um, then pay that money out, meaning that people won't be left out of pocket. So once again, another good benefit, but you're probably noticing so far that realistically, they're fairly minor changes, okay? In terms of the bad, look, one of the biggest things that um, a lot of the banks were really scared about was the Commissioner Hayne going after what they call vertical integration. So a lot of people may not know what that means. Essentially what they wanted to do was separate products from advice. So force the banks into separating their operations so that the people that provide the products don't provide advice. I personally think that would have been a fantastic change for consumers. However, Commissioner Hayne said that probably something like that would cause too much disruption and the disruption is unlikely to produce a reasonable benefit in the economy. Yeah, I don't know about that, Ryan. So, uh, you know, that's not gonna change. The other thing um, is brokers. You've probably seen a lot of media around about brokers. So essentially, one of the recommendations was that brokers shouldn't be paid commissions from the banks and that consumers should have to pay the broker. But the reality is, and I think this is a terrible recommendation, I find it um, shocking that for a banking royal commission, the industry that came out worse or worse out of everyone was not the banks. None of the banks, you know, they're not going to jail. They're not really being um, hit with any major consequences. But these changes are going to hugely impact the broking industry purely and simply because consumers aren't going to pay two to four thousand dollars to then use the service of a broker. 
Now the reality is, is that brokers currently provide just shy of 60% of all new loans, and they're able to provide you a wide range of options as well as advice in how to structure the loans. So as an example, Infinite Finance, part of our group, we deal with 48 lenders, 1,600 different products. Now the, the benefit of this competition, and this has been found through a number of different uh, research studies and, uh, and papers that were done on this, is this competition has reduced interest rates. That's been directly benefited consumers. So moving away from this model is gonna push people generally back towards the banks. Non-bank lenders, smaller banks are gonna get much less mortgage share. And ultimately what you're gonna see is interest rates creep up. The final thing that came out of it was, which I can understand, essentially the recommendation was that there should be another regulator to regulate the already two regulators that sit in the financial services industry. So Commissioner Hayne is recommending a regulator to regulate the regulators to make sure they're regulating about regulating rah, rah, rah. Okay guys, crazy. Why aren't the regulators just doing what they should be doing to begin with, right? So, um, you know, I don't think that will negatively impact consumers apart from the costs that are gonna be associated with it. Um, however, it just seems ridiculous that we would need that. So that's pretty much the breakdown and everything you need to know from the Banking Royal Commission. But let's next get into our next story, which is the experts currently tipping an RBA cut soon. So this comes after the Reserve Bank of Australia left interest rates on hold on Tuesday. But what's seeming more and more likely is a reduction in this cash rate um, in the coming future. And in particular, there were 28 experts in Finder's RBA cash rate survey that correctly predicted the RBA would keep their cash rate on hold at 1.5%. Uh, but their predict predictions have changed dramatically, okay? Now, for the past two years, about 80% of experts have predicted an increase being the next move in the cash rate. Uh, and what's happening now is 11, only 11 of those 28 experts are currently predicting so. So we're seeing more experts predicting that the next move will actually be down. Um, as an example, Stephen Kukoulis, uh, Managing Director at Market Economics, uh, he said that we could see that change happening almost as quickly as next month. So keep, your, keep an eye out, it's gonna be good for all of us out there uh, if we see rates coming down. And then finally, the Westpac boss has rejected blame. So Westpac Chief Brian Hartzer has rejected claims that the big four banks are worsening the house, housing price slump in Sydney and Melbourne by cutting off credit. So Hartzer does suggest However, look, basically what they're saying is they want to lend. They want to be out there and they want to be lending. Okay, however, they are suggesting, however, that an increase in the security of customer expenses and income has added to the time of cost, cost in getting a loan. This is certainly something that we've seen over the past six to 12 months. Um, the banks have dramatically altered the way that they calculate servicing. So what people are able to lend now, I mean, this is off the back of some of the restrictions that APRA put in. Uh, although I don't necessarily agree with what uh, with what uh, Brian Hartzer is saying. I think uh, we've found that um, it's certainly been much harder to get money and certainly the amount of money that you can get from the banks. And I think the banks were very, uh, being very careful in the lead up to the recommendations of the Banking Royal Commission. Now that's done, I do tend to think that, that um, they will start to get a little bit more uh, relaxed and they're certainly approaching lending with a bit more ease, okay? So he did say that the housing market remains fundamentally unsound, which you've got to stay away from a lot of this crazy media, you know, keep in mind that bad news sells, talking about price, housing price crashes and crashes in Sydney and Melbourne. Overall, the adjustments are nothing to be alarmed about. See, the price falls in Sydney and Melbourne need to be seen in the context that over the past, uh, since 2011 to 2017, Sydney jumped by 75%. We talked about this a lot, and Melbourne rose by 55%. So see them move into a more of a downturn phase of this cycle is entirely projected. So that's it guys, that's all for the week in real estate. A little bit longer than normal because we had the Banking Royal Commission, but like I said, please share, please interact with these videos, please ask your comments, questions, so that I can come back to you and answer those for you. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again later on in the week. Thanks a lot guys, have a great day.